Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I was searching around, I got myself a guest here. Her name is Lynn and the last name is Howard. You there, Lynn? I am, hi Brad. Hello. I'm gonna ask you again, where are you in this world? I'm currently in Bangkok, Thailand. Isn't it fascinating how the internet can kind of zoom across to the other side of the planet? It is amazing. I think of like when we were young and had to write letters or you had to pay for long distance phone calls and I get to chat with my kids every day on FaceTime and see the grandbabies. It's wonderful. <laughs> so it's easy to be virtual. And it's in real time. That's amazing. Um, I used to network a lot with a guy from uh, the UK and we would send things to each other, you know, and you click the little button to send and you can hear when something hits the other side because it pings, you know, makes a little ding. Mm -hmm. And I swear I'd push the button and that ding would happen immediately. Instant. <laughs> and it's fascinating that it can happen so fast. It is incredible. You have to love technology nowadays. I mean, it's kind of a love-hate relationship because exactly the same thing. Once it's out there, it's out there. <laughs> there's, there's no redoing. I mean, there can be, but it's out there. So. Well, I've had people that, that, that want to like take down old stuff. And I'm saying just bury it with new stuff. That's all you really have to do. Instead of trying Absolutely. to find the old stuff, just keep on because... That's what we do is we evolve, you know? Mm -hmm. So your business is in the business world and I've been in business self-employed all my life. And so what kind of business do you, are you working in any specific like industry, like the healthcare industry or the medical devices or stock market? Uh, uh, so coaching and consulting, I'm in, that's, the best way, best classification, I would say, in business um, and life coaching and consulting, and really in the entrepreneurial world. I am a serial entrepreneur as well. I've started many businesses across the globe um, and sold businesses, as well as uh, worked for a global company um, as a COO, so as a C-suite. So I've kind of seen both sides of the spectrum. Um, and then also been in sales and in people skills, we'll say. I was a cosmetologist uh, in high school, so, and then mm -hmm. as a young mom, and um, so, yeah, kind of well-rounded, and, uh, but entrepreneurial development in the coaching and consulting world. I think there's going to be a huge wave of that, especially and accelerated with this whole uh, pandemic kind of thing, where people have sort of been forced to create a second source of income or, or something a little more, less risky. You know, when I, I graduated high school in 1975, and I, I did magic as a kid, and mm. then I got into, I, I was doing magic through high school, but then when I graduated, everybody said, you should get a job. So I did. I got a job <laughs> with the county parks department, and I thought I had a job, a career, you know, cutting down trees, mowing lawns, emptying garbage, and all that stuff for the county parks. And in three years, I got laid off, and I thought, well, where's my gold watch? I thought I had a job here. Mm. I learned early on in my life that a job's not secure. So I opted to be self-employed and now people are forced into it. So I think you're going to have a lot of opportunity for people going, you know what? I want to start my own thing. Definitely. I wish I could remember and uh, it's late here. So my mind isn't fully working, but Forbes put out an article before I would say maybe six months to a year ago about, um, uh, individual self-learning. So essentially people wanting to learn more about personal development, business development on their own for the entrepreneurial journey and how it was going to hit a certain threshold uh, by t the end of 2020 or the end of 2021. But really we are going to skyrocket past that. It was billions of dollars that they'll invest. Um, but now is a great opportunity. I know it's scary at any time, but it is a great opportunity to start businesses that are new, that are innovative, that are fresh, um, just because there, there are a lot of things that are evolving right now. And, uh, you know, as the world kind of is creating the, and I don't even want to say the new norm, but kind of what is to come because it's going to be a process. There's a, there's a lot of opportunity to be able to step out onto your own and be your own boss. And, and for those that aren't, that are stuck at home, that are still with a job and that are telecommuting um, 
with business as a C-suite. I work with the um, people from all over that are, you know, C-suite that are telecommuting. And now the business, the company has to decide, are they going to keep them at home or not? They still have to learn entrepreneurial skills. They have to learn how to be self-sufficient and sustaining and be able to, but also the company has to learn how to support them being at home. So it's, it's a really interesting dynamic right now. And it's all things that I love to do for myself and for my clients. So even something as simple as now that you're working at home, guess what? You have to empty your own wastebasket. (laughs) <laughs> you yes. have to do that at the office that's true well and the distraction like it's so i am I'll, I'll, i love to use myself as an example i'm really self-motivated i work all the time that's my ex he would always tell me how i would always work way too much if we're best friends so i can use has him as an example all the time and throw him under the bus but and so with this being said, I'm a high producer. I love to work. I love being engaged and doing things. But, you know, being stuck in a condo in Bangkok because we we're on lockdown for three months, I'm like, I'm craving for some different stimulation. And so, um, you know, it does get old working in the same place all the time. And when you don't have a boss looking after you, regardless if you're working for someone or you're working on your own, you do have to be creative and exactly like that. Like, be able to also compartmentalize the distractions or, you know, what your tasks, you know, if you have young kids, they could always empty the waste baskets for you too. But sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, if that's being innovative, we're all sitting to say, you know what, Yes. I'm going to hire you and you're going to be my little assistant. And then you can pay them a little salary so they can buy their own bike. And that's getting yeah. into that entrepreneurial spirit and teaches you how to start delegating tasks. And, and mm-hmm. also the, I think the new word is going to become innovative different than creative like Mm -hmm. my wife used to love to go to coffee shops and work out of the coffee shop and because we're in this lockdown thing she's not able to can't go to the coffee shop so she created her own coffee shop in her office she set up a little corner with a little table and and she has her coffee and she pretends like she's in a coffee shop absolutely innovation is huge in business um, and in one's own personal life Uh, otherwise you know stagnant kind of same old same old complacency it doesn't really give you productivity so do you do and you it work doesn't with, get you excited about things do you work Sorry. with people that just all of a sudden had an idea and they're going you know what i'm not going to be able to go back to work so i'm going to start my own business i decided i want to start selling these uh ribbons that i used to make for the for dogs you start like grassroots kind of teaching people I do have some clients who are grassroots um, and I have worked with clients who really they were in a position or in a, had a business and they transitioned out into a new one. So yes. um, And all the way to C-suite really where my sweet spot is, is more in the psychographics. It's people who want change, people who need the accountability, people who are motivated. Um, Usually they, they are going through a huge transition, which is kind of funny because the whole world is going through a transition (laughs) right now. Um, But those that are just hungry, know that there's more out there, want more to do more, see more, be more, but yet don't have that person or don't have it, don't have that person around them or the team around them that will help get them to that next level. Um, with businesses, I actually help with like transition plans or employee, um, uh, culture. Uh, so slightly different, but, um, but on individuals, yes, that's, that's what I would say. Well, I think it's, it's good for people to be able to hire someone like you, because usually the reason they don't want to move forward is that fear. It's almost like you're walking in the dark and you don't know where to step. But if there's yeah. someone, if they hire a coach that's already walked the path, they can tell them where to go. Absolutely. Well, a coach's job, or I'll say a coach consultant, because um, coach's job is really to ask the right questions to be able to get the individual to come up with their own answers. And I'm, I would say I'm definitely a hybrid. I do not mind telling people what to do if that's what they need. Uh, but I can also be a coach and ask you questions to get you to get you to your own conclusions. But at the end of the day, our job is to, to be able to be that 360 piece, right? To be able to be the person who can see out of the forest for you or question you to be able to help you see out of that forest. And um, 
And on top of that, you know, it really is important to surround yourself with people who can be like-minded, who can support you. So many people, I mean, entrepreneurship is not taught in college, period. I don't care what kind of classes they are. They are becoming more progressive and inclusive and, and in slightly different dynamics to them. But at the end of the day, entrepreneurship is not taught. And that fear also, it can come from fear of failure. It can also come from fear of success, you know, and it really depends on kind of the patterns in which we developed since we were children and what we were brought into and how, kind of where our mindset is in order to be able to overcome the obstacle. And we're not one size fits all. And I think that that's what makes me such a great coach as well is that I do have the ability to feed off of people and be able to kind of meet them where they're at. Um, and, and because of my diverse background, not just in business, but also in life and um, overcoming my own obstacles, like I have that ability to be able to kind of help people if it's either the fear of failure, the fear of success, to be able to navigate those steps, trust that process, and build the right people around them in order to support them. Um, because regardless of how much fear we have, Everybody, everybody around us is telling us how to do it, when to do it, what to do because of their own fear for us, right? And um, understanding that, understanding their dynamics just really helps for a better foundation in our business. But um, yeah, so I agree. I think you made a good point as far as like uh, colleges can kind of teach you business skills, you know, mm -hmm. but the entrepreneurial thing is something that's, that's, like learned acquired or born with it's a different mm. uh, entrepreneurial spirit kind of thing and you mm -hmm. being a coach consultant hybrid i mean consulting to me i think is more kind of like i've gone down that path so let me consult mm. you on how to do this whereas like i said the coaching is really asking the right questions to draw it out of them and i think when people first step into that entrepreneurial world and not know what to do you ask them the right questions and they can just give you the answer because it's obvious, but they didn't think of it. You had to ask the question for them to be able to even conceive it. Absolutely. And also with the consulting part is, and I'm a big relationship person, um, a baseline of, you know, who I am is I'm a networker. I'm very, I understand connection and referrals and, and again, building the right community around you is, I, I'm not the, I'm not the fix it all person as a coach or consultant, there might be another agency or another person that they could go see to have that done. And so being that resource for that individual is really important as wearing a coaching consulting hat for anybody who's a coaching consultant is you are a resource for your client to be sure. able to direct them in the way where they need to go. Because you can't take it all on like finances aren't my thing, but I can direct you to a CPA, a financial mindset person, a right. bookkeeper or, and I have plenty of them that I know. And then I have good relationship relationships with, so I can make the right connections with the right people. Cause again, we're, you know, as my kids always heard me say, I'm not everybody's cup of tea and nobody is, right? And so you finding that right person who's, the, you know, to help them move along. So you've got really your coaching ideal. consulting hat and then you got your coaching <laughs> consultant tool belt. Absolutely. Right? And you can kind of pull it out and say, this is the direction you got to go. And that's really helpful mm -hmm. too, because you've kind of been there, done that and go, oh, here's this person that is a uh, virtual assistant and they work with the Kartra platform you need to talk with Debbie. She's really good at that and just make that connection. That's what's cool Absolutely. about, um, um, I'm, I'm in the affiliate marketing world where I sell other people's products. That way I don't have to fulfill them. All I have yeah. to do is just make the connection. And that way you can get your Absolutely. compensation by just referring somebody to something like that with a simple affiliate link as far as joining their whatever. It's a fascinating world these days. <laughs> It really is. There's so many possibilities. It's incredible. And I think that that's one thing. Actually, it's one of my many taglines that I've had over the years is people and possibilities. It's part of my bio, but it's like a core of who I am. But I, I've always believed like there's, there's just so many opportunities. There's so many possibilities if we just open up our eyes and trust and, but we have to take that step as well. Um, and especially with technology nowadays, it's just incredible. And I, I do want to add to everything that we just said 
And then you add the complexity of not just going through COVID, but also Black Lives Matter movement and being inclusive and different things. It is so important to have somebody who can actually help direct you and to call you out on things and to really be able to be that support because it, there's so much to navigate right now, transitioning back into work for those states or countries that are opening back up in Bangkok. We're in our fifth phase um, of opening. And so working with people here, like, you know, they might be different than Illinois, right? That are still fairly locked down. And so um, it's just really, it's helpful to have somebody to help guide you who can be, um, you know, not biased and, and really just really help you get to the conclusion and you be settled on your decision. Well, and if you're talking, if you yourself are talking with a lot of different people, that again gives you that different avenues you can direct them down and make connections. Like say, for example, um, they're, they're doing a business and they don't know where to go because this world is so big and everybody wants to buy my product. You may be able to know exactly where to put them because this market really buys your product. Now you know where to focus. Your right. advertising Everybody product. doesn't want to buy your product. No, I had, uh, <laughs> First thing that I say to them. <laughs> she, she sold this skin moisturizer and she said, well, everybody's got skin. I said, that's your problem because it's too yeah. broad of a market. You'll never reach them all. You gotta Definitely. Them it, it, and that drives me crazy too. I, I was actually a director for BNI, a business networking international. Sure. It's a network. Okay. For 10 years. And so I dealt with individuals who were definitely, that was their, their key thing. Everybody, anyone, any who, and it would drive me crazy, but you're right. You know, you do, you do have to be particular. You should know who your ideal client is, or your target market is, and how to communicate to them and what actions you're doing to, in order to attract them and what's the attrition rate. And totally, there, there's so many moving parts and that's why it's important to have people who you can trust um, are, have your best interests in mind in order to help you navigate. Well, this. the business world has changed so much back when I was, I'm 63. So I've been doing it for a while and it used to be broadcasting where you want to reach as many people as possible. And you'd use stuff like billboards and radio and TV, but you're not in control of who gets that information. You know, they're all driving down the freeway. They see the billboard and you got to pick and choose who's going to, who's going to see it. Whereas now, you can narrow that niche down and you can use Facebook ads to target 25 year olds that are mothers that are yoga instructors that uh, have an interest in investing. You can hit that. That are left handed. Like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. It's incredible. And it's funny. I was in sales, like I said, I was in sales forever. How I would market is I literally had a, finally I got a recorder, but I would write down truck names because I sold AT&T and, um, two-way pagers when they first came out. I was a sales rep in cellular phones. And so when I would be in Chicago driving down the road and I'd see all of these trucks, I'd write down the names and then I got a recorder and I thought I was cool because then I could record the names. And then I would cold prospect and I would call them. <laughs> but think, so many things have changed since then with technology and also my understanding now of like building the right referral sources and, and partners and being able to network and have the right people on your team as well. It increases your time worth, time worth value incredibly. Um, and it's all about, you know, are you spending the time where you really want to, or are you spending the time ch chasing your tail? A lot of times entrepreneurs are chasing their tail. Well, the whole chasing thing, it's just, uh, it isn't necessary anymore. There's that attraction marketing mm -hmm. element where you just put stuff out there and people are on the internet searching for stuff. And if you know how mm -hmm. to use the right keywords, they find it. Like my background's in the event industry and I produce a local trade show here in Minneapolis. It's a, the Minnesota Event Planners Expo. So who am I looking mm -hmm. for as far as to be exhibitors in there? I would like to find some caterers. So if I use the keyword caterers near me, you know, who's searching for that probably would be event planners. Mm -hmm. And now I invite those event planners to the expo that are looking mm -hmm. for caterers and you just use Absolutely. that keyword. And who, who else is, you're not going to type in event planners and or caterers in Minneapolis. Why would you do that? Because you're in Thailand. No, no need. <laughs> so there would be the, it's very not qualified locally. No. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or, um, 
travel destinations in Bangkok. If you use those key words, you're gonna find exactly who you're looking for. Yes, absolutely. That's yeah, it's cool amazing the hashtags. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Well, I don't like to do these too long because people do have that commodity of time. You know, we've all got 24 hours in a day, but do you have something that you offer new clients to kind of dip their toe in the water and learn more about what you do and things like a little uh, introductory lesson or something? Well, definitely. They, I can give you my Calendly link and they can set up a free 30 minute uh, strategy call um, just to have a conversation. And I am, will be launching my new, um, uh, essentially it's an assessment and then they have an eight part video that comes with it. It's in creation right now since oh. I'm getting to create some new stuff. So, um, but until then, I love having strategy calls with people who are interested to just learn more and see if they, you know, if I can help them out. Um, so it's a quick call. We usually spend about 20 minutes and if they come with a question, then I'd be able to kind of walk them through and help them get some clarity around that or some answers or some actionable steps. That's the way to do it these days to be able to let somebody kind of have a conversation and see if you resonate. And if you don't, then you just kind of part ways. Absolutely. And if you do, then, hey, let's move forward. It has to be the right fit for both of us. And I'm definitely, I'm in a place right now where I can take on a certain amount of strategy calls. And so absolutely, I'm open to them, especially until my, my other thing is complete. Do you have a specific <laughs> website that people can connect with right now? Or is that in development too? Or is there some place we can go? That's in with? development. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, I can give you uh, my Calendly link as well as a couple of Kajabi landing pages that I have. Um, but as far as uh, creating my own brand, since I've just stepped down as the global COO and really developing my own brand, it's all in process. So it's exciting. Okay. Um, I do have my franchise brand. Oh, you cut out there for a little that's while. That's something that's, you know, coexisting with my, my brand. You cut out there a little bit. Re repeat that. You cut out a little bit. But. I said I do have my franchise brand, but it's coexisting. You don't make appointments via the franchise uh, okay. website or anything. Well, when you get stuff a uh, little more solidified, go ahead and give me a call back. We'll do another interview on your progress. We can definitely do that. But other than that, I'd love that. I will put this one in the can and beam it up to the universe and let the, the, the seekers find it. Well, All right. Thank you, Brad. Well, then I appreciate you taking the time to be on Synergy Cafe and have fun in Bangkok. I will. Thank you so much. Peace.